Directorate of Distance Education, Management Wing, the course on product and service marketing, common to MBA marketing management. Presentation by Dr. A. Silvarasu, Professor of Business Administration and Management Wing Head. The resources for the course is also referred with Harvard Business School online tutorial and our lesson plan, objectives and course outcome. The teaching plan for the course follows learning objective, course outcome, syllabus, Harvard Business School educational tutorial and the next session on first six lessons briefing will be done. Objective, product and services, how it is important, how it is made, how the offers are designed is the first learning objective and second objective is how do we brand or assign some trademarks, logo with which consumer can identify the most reliable, trustworthy product and service offered in the market. Third learning objective is going to be on uh, packaging and labeling as a value addition how packaging can help the products to be offered and attracted by the customer. And fourth learning objective is to understand the requirement of service quality, how service marketing is done with the service delivery process. And the last learning objective is on the service concepts and how it is applied and how the implications of marketing concepts on product and services is managed as a product management function. The course outcomes are managing product mix and product life cycle. How the products are offered in the market and how do we mix in terms of product line, product width, product uh, depth, length in various combinations. How do we mix the products in terms of size, in terms of uh, uh, quality, how do we mix the product and how the product life cycle is maintained and is it uh, necessary to manage the product life cycle or can we allow the product to enjoy the market and second course outcome would be creating value for the brand so the product is identified in the market not as a product but in the name sign symbol or a combination of all these things put together is identified and it carries a specific value and that is the core function of product management wherein we introduce the brand and logo and the third course outcome would be on using packaging as a value addition for the product how the packaging helps to add value to the product whereby the customers understand the product receive the product as they like and the fourth course outcome is bridging the service gap. What is the customer expected service and how the company is offering the service and on one hand expectation of the customers on the other hand how the companies are offering their expectation or performing their expectation by meeting their expectation and what is the gap between these two expectation and performance what is the gap that's going to be the uh, key concern in service marketing. And that would be the skill of how to bridge the gap between service expectation and performance. And the four, fifth course outcome is managing service quality. How the service quality is managed, in where you have to make corrections, where there is a failure, where there is a, you know, you can attempt to solve the uh, fail points, waiting line and fail points can be resolved and that way services can be managed in the delivery process. Now we are going to the syllabus. First unit is going to be on product. How do the products are made? What are the classification of the product? What is a staple product? What is durable product? What is non-durable product? Uh, how do we identify these product and how the products are offered in the 
customer's uh, requirement. And the product manager decides about all the uh, category of uh, products. Each product classification has its own way of handling things. And that way, the product management is done with respect to classifying the product. How the, you know, when it takes to uh, uh, industrial product, how the raw materials are managed, how the consumables are managed, how the finished products are managed. In that way, product management classification is important for industrial product. And for uh, the consumer product, it is important to identify how the products are being classified, uh, you know, in the uh, perspective of the consumer's uh, uh, requirements. A product is basically anything that is satisfying the customer, we call that as a product. Anything, it could be a person who can satisfy as a professional, a doctor, advocate, uh, the celebrity, the actor. He can also be a product. Even can be a product. Idea can be a product. So various uh, things can be offered that can satisfy the customer. Therefore, we call that it as a product. Either it is in the form of service or in the form of product. It should satisfy the requirement of the customer. There should be a satisfaction component and whereby we call that as a product. And you have different levels of product. So you call that first level as core profit or core product or core benefit. Then you have next level is basic product. Then you have expected product. Then you have augmented product. Then you have potential products. The core benefit is a person having thirsty feeling. So thirsty means you look for uh, water consumption. You need to drink water, basically. There's a you know, deprivation of water. And that is being the basic or core benefit. When a person feeling thirst is the core benefit. How do you meet this? You can offer water or you can offer beverage drinks. So anything that you offer in the form of a liquid in place of water can be basic product. Anything that you straight away offer as a water, that's a core benefit. So which can satisfy the thirsty feeling of a customer. Likewise, you move to the uh, expected product. Water cannot be offered as it is. Now it is being you know, purified water or you have cool, cold water or you have you know, uh, mineral water or you have vitamin water or we have you know, the glucovitam water. Uh, that way, the additional uh, component of the product can take different levels. Basic product, you simply clean the clean water and pack it and sell it. It could be the basic requirement. Expected product, it can be a, a you know beverage drink, and it could be a augmented product. You know, it could be in various forms in which you can uh, uh, offer the product in the way the customer is looking for. And similarly, you have potential product. Nowadays, you see from the air itself, uh, people are. Uh, able to condense the air and uh, offer the uh, water in the desert places like where you don't have the reserves of water on the earth. You go in for offering the uh, condensation of the water and the air. So that also you have it as a potential product in the uh, market. So starting from the core, basic, expected, augmented and potential, you have a different offering. Similarly, you have it in the hotel service, you offer a place for taking rest. In those days, you can see, you know, uh, the community members join together and they establish a place for shelter. And they, anybody can go and have take rest and come out. So that is a core benefit. Basically, when you travel across, you need a place to take rest. So that is the core benefit. Then you move on basic product in a simple hotel, a hotel wherein you offer a, uh, a room, maybe with cart or without cart. Uh, bed facilities may be there and may not be there. And the expected means minimum cot should be there and you have should have a bed and you should have a, a fan. And augmented maybe an air conditioned room and wherein you have uh, all the facilities uh, uh, in addition to the other uh, expected product. And likewise, you move on to the potential product. It, you have a place to, you know, like a, a room, you know, like a house, a reception. And you, it can be called as a suit in a hotel. So you have a reception or you have a place to meet people. You should have a place to take rest and you should have uh, uh, facilities to make coffee and uh, even uh, ready to make food. All these facilities are offered in a hotel itself. So that way the product can be 
put in different levels. So that will be dealt in the first unit as a product. Product classification and what are the levels of a product. Likewise, you move on to the uh, management of the product in the market. So there are current market and current uh, product. Likewise, you have new market and new product. So their matrix can be formed using these market, newness and existing market. Likewise, you have existing product and new product. So in making this combination for a current market and for current product, you have to penetrate the market, get into the market. Likewise, for the current product, if you have a new market, you have to develop the market. Market has to be developed. You should go create awareness and bring in a lot of information, insights to the customer so that desirable you know, outcome can be done. Therefore, market can be developed. People started buying a product. So that way, a new market for a current product has to be developed, market development. And likewise, for a current market, and you, can, you can also offer a new product that's called product development. Likewise, if the new market and new products are there, then you have to diversify your product orientation. That way, product can be studied in the first unit. Likewise, you have product mix in the same first unit. Product mix is a combination of product width and product breadth. You have first place product line, line 1, line 2, line 3 and line 4. And line 1, for an example, for PNG, Procter & Gamble company, you can look at the brands. Aerial, Aerial Fragrance, two variants are available. Aerial Front to Matte, two variants are available. Tide, Tide Detergent, five variants are available. Tide Bar, three variants are available. You have identified length, there are two lengths, Aerial and Tide, you have two. Depth, there are 12 variants are available. And depth, you have six different depth is available for fabric care. Likewise, you have to feminine products. Whisper, four variants are available. And length one, depth four, and average depth is four. And likewise, you have hair care product, Pantene Pro V, and head and shoulder, and the Rejoice variants. You can identify the length, depth, and average depth. Average depth is nothing but depth divided by the length. You will get average depth. Likewise, you have healthcare, Wix Vapor Up, and you have Wix Inhaler, and Drops, Wix Action 500, how many lengths are, five lengths are made available, depth 16 depths are available, and average depth is 3.2. So you have a product mix, how do you arrange and offer your product line, and uh, what is the product width, and what is the product depth and product length. All these are combination of product mix. Likewise, you have the uh, customer group, you know, when you go to the market, how do you offer your product, how do they identify your product, and uh, make uh, consumption. So it's almost equivalent to the innovation adoption cycle of a product. So how when you offer a new product, how customers are you know, expressing their characteristics. Technology enthusiast, you can say. They are venturesome and enjoy tinkering with new products and mastering their intricacies. 2.5% of them will be falling under this category called technology enthusiast, or we can call them as innovators. Likewise, you go to the opinion leader, that is second category of customers, where Opinion leaders who carefully search for new technology that might give them a dramatic competitive advantage. Only then they will buy. So they are opinion leaders. They collect more information than consumption, about 13.5%. Then you have deliberate pragmatics. So deliberate pragmatism people you know, who adopt the new technology when its benefits are proven and a lot of adoption has already been taken place. 34% of them falling under this category. Then you have skeptical conservatives. People, uh, you know, late majority, we can say, who are risk averse, technology shy, and price sensitive. It's again 34% equally. And you have last category, tradition bound people, and uh, they will be the last category. They resist innovation until the status quo is no longer defensible. If they can't, you know, defend their consumption, and uh, then only they will go for a purchase. And you have product life cycle where uh, the uh, graph is made using the revenue curve on the top and profit curve on the bottom. You have it in the sales and profit on your y-axis and you have period on the x-axis. So you will have for every product there will be a different pattern of cycle. The majority of the product follows this cycle with the phases like introduction, growth, maturity and decline. These are the stages of the product. You can take the revenue curve 
and you can take the profit curve you can understand how best uh, the product is uh, you know proving results for the company so whenever there is a profit curve reaching positive it is moving away from the introduction phase and it will uh, stand almost growing and uh, uh, reaching the maximum in the stage of growth and maturity the moment profit start declining you call that as stage as a declining stage so we will be studying in detail in the first unit and so likewise you have market share is one of the important thing for product how the products are positioned and how the marketing efforts are made combining these two uh, multiplying this product position and marketing effort you will get market share and we will move on to the second unit which is on brand brand is nothing but a sign or symbol or uh, any kind of identification mark that is given to the product for the benefit of identification and recognition easy recognition and unique perception of the product features and a brand is a important lesson in the unit 2 where you have branding and how do we design how do we create a brand what are the things that you will take into account which aspect has to be spelled out in the brand all that is being taken care in branding so sony uh, is a powerful brand and how the brand was made whether the brand is first established or the product is made like that uh, debate can be done for various brands that is available in the market and some of some of the uh, brands could have replaced the product itself a copier normally we uh, is a product but xerox has a uh, brand it has replaced it completely the so uh, the uh, product so in that way brand can replace the product itself uh, you have uh, vanaspathi oil dalda you know kind of things you know it is easy and interesting to understand what is called a brand and you have studies on branding decision how do we decision uh, decide on the name of the brand how do we uh, go for co branding combining two brands together and uh, try to promote the uh, brand jointly uh, intel inside in a computer normally intel as a brand uh, important uh, processor uh, component of the computer but that's being taken care as a co branding exercise likewise you have it positioning and you have pos uh, perceptual map you can see it on the right side how the caffeine and high content of caffeine and low content of caffeine and low in sugar and high in uh, sugar that way coke and pepsi falls in high caffeine and high sugar and uh, low sugar and high caffeine you have coke zero pepsi max diet coke pepsi light all that you have and you have low caffeine and high sugar you have seven up and fanta so these kind of mapping is done so that you position your product with a brand name and uh, consumer will easily understand what purpose the brand is going to serve likewise you have trademarks the trademarks are different signs and square you can see oval shape you can see triangle you can see hexagonal you can see and you have uh, right click tick marks and like that you have uh, various uh, uh, trademarks uh, symbols which can be used and you have a very beautiful model on brand uh, components model or brand equity model given by aker aker is one of the pioneering uh, brand management uh, professor who has contributed a lot of things in the brand equity you have uh, uh, the 10 commandments or 10 components say when you say loyalty it contains two components one is price premium and the other one is satisfaction and the second component or dimension we say perceived quality or leadership perceived quality and leadership are the other two components of brand equity then you have third dimension association and differentiation which is perceived value brand personality and associations brand association so these are the uh, almost you have uh, uh, seven uh, components we have seen so far and you have next dimension awareness level of awareness that is another component of uh, brand equity and you have market behavior market behavior comprises of two components one is market share and the other one is distribution issues so all these 10 components if you study thoroughly and you can design and build upon your brand equity so that is the lesson which we will be studying in the second unit and you have third unit which is called packaging as i told you packaging is meant for value addition people can 
you know, it's a boundary or the l outer line for a brand or a product. It's it's a outer layer to identify the product. So you have a various uh, you know designed packages are available, and uh, eco-friendly packages are highly recommended for uh, consumption today. Recyclable uh, packages are uh, used. Packaging has come out in various forms, and all the packages can be uh, used to market the product in an easy way. And you have labels attached to it. You can see the uh, present requirement of the new labels. What are the different things improved upon in the different labels? So you have a uh, uh, serving types, larger types of uh, uh, you know uh, letters used, and serving sizes are updated. And you have nutritional facts, calories, and you know daily values are updated. What are the components or the proportion of the ingredients are there in the uh, component uh, uh, contained in the product? And you have uh, additional features like uh, new added sugars, change in requ nutrient requirements, and uh, actual amount declared, new footnotes. These are the new uh, improvement in the labels. And you have uh, you know, fashion and uh, fad as a cycle. So you can uh, see the product has moved uh, in various uh, levels so that it sometimes the product goes out of the market. We call it as obsolescence or obsolete uh, product obsolescence or it can be a planned obsolescence. Sometimes what happens? Planned obsolescence. You wanted to get away the product from the market. So you can see in the musical uh, uh, product, gramophone was the uh, first uh, level of product. Then you have record player, then you have a cassette tapes, then compact disc, then you have mini disc, then MP3 players, and you have today's Spotify and uh, Ghana and uh, Amazon Music. You know, they, it has come in live streaming of the music itself. So the product uh, can have a absolute get away from the market by following fad cycle and fashion cycle. So first one you can see fashion cycle rise, fad, decline and you have classical uh, downfall and you have again rise and peak. So cycle, recycle pattern, fashion cycle, fad cycle, these are the various forms in which product can be uh, removed from the market, a new product come in and replace the market. And you have next uh, fourth unit as service marketing. Service marketing is, you know, service is intangible in nature, whereas product is tangible in nature. But all the same, uh, product pure in nature and product pure in service, it has a continuum. Pure tangible goods from visibility, you can feel the product to a pure service which you cannot even touch and feel. It is perishable in nature. It is intangible in nature. But you avail the service. Like uh, uh, the uh, uniqueness of the service means you can't uh, keep preserve it for longer time. So like that, there's a combination of uh, tangible goods with service and there is a major service and little goods and there's a hybrid. 50-50 also is available. So based on this, service marketing is done. Service marketing is, uh, you know, very uh, important thing in the, any country's uh, GDP. Service occupies the major proportion of uh, gross domestic product in any given country. And therefore, service marketing is more important. You promote the service with the help of understanding different types of products, different types of services. So nature of service and recipients of service, you can classify this. So tangible action, people, things are the recipients of the services. What you understand is whether you can group it only people and whether you can serve only uh, in terms of you know things, material. And likewise, you have intangible actions. Uh, you have people and you have things. So when it comes to tangible action and people, we call the services like healthcare, beauty salon, restaurant, these are the first category. And then you have second category, tangible services. But you, it is not people, but it is things. You can see fry, transportation, dry cleaning, witness service. All these are the things which are offered in the service format. And you have intangible uh, people, educational service, information service, entertainment. All these are intangible in nature. You can't see. Only you can cognize it, understand it. So that way, people understand it. Therefore, we call it as people and intangible action put together is one such category. And the other category is banking service, legal service, 
insurance service which you cannot uh, you know uh, feel humanly but it is possible to understand and and uh, can be uh, offered which is important for us to keep our money to uh, sort out our uh, uh, civil rights and uh, insurance uh, things like that can be studied in the service marketing and you have a gaps model of service quality where you have uh, uh, more than five levels of gaps are offered you can see on one hand customer on the other hand company so the customer expected service is the first starting point and you move slightly to the company you have companies perception of consumers expectation the way customer is looking for service it should be perceived by the company the way customer expects but there can be difference we may say something but the company may understand something else so there will be a possibility of gap one so expected service by the customer and the company's perception gap one starts and then you move on to the company will define the gap and try to make specifications and try to make standardized service possibility is that the expectations or the perception of the company and standardization of the service there can be a gap we call it as gap 2 and similarly from the standardized service it comes to the service delivery there is a possibility that there can be a gap what is standardized and what is being delivered there may be a gap so from that perspective gap 3 can be defined likewise you move on to the uh, service delivery and how do we communicate to the customers there may be a commu communication gap and that is called gap 4 and the last one is through the communication customer will perceive it and try to consume the service so from there also there is a possibility of gap so, so gap filling or bridging the gap will be uh, the most important topic in the service quality and service delivery likewise you have a service blueprint service blueprint you have it like customer journey is the first point of uh, level where you call it as line of interaction where customer interact with the company so that is a customer journey so how the customer is you know getting to know about our university whether they will visit in the website and understand it how where they will come whether they are coming to the university and how do they who is the first person to meet whether they are meeting the receptionist or the you know uh, security guard who is in front of the administrative building and he may be giving the direction which department is located in which place and all that so or the map of the university may help the student to move inside the university so likewise the customer journey starts from different different levels that's we call it as line of interaction the first person point of contact for the customer may be uh, you know the security guard who is there or the receptionist or the uh, office assistant or the faculty members or the alumni you know, likewise customer journey and contact persons and evidences what are the artifacts are available and that can also be a, a, a university map can be an artifact student can easily see and move around uh, you know to reach the department respective department so line of interaction will start the first place so that has to be put in very clear understanding and so that you can go in for the front stage or uh, line of visibility where employee actions are taken and how the technology are used and who is the correct person to address the requirement that is a front stage operation and we call it as line of visibility and from there you know the moment the student is submitting an application uh, it is the visible uh, the postal or the dispatch section will receive it the application and they give it to the backstage they will number assign some particular number for the letter and it will be uh, you know processed and uh, registered in the document and that will be forwarded to the department and the faculty members uh, will be given the you know verification of the certificate so in that way backstage operations may not be known to the students students will not come in contact so that way backstage action is important then you have line of internal interactions so, so you have other supporting services which can be you know forming part of the entry in the computer database creation all these are you know various components of blueprint service blueprint which we need to understand where you can understand here there may be a failure point there may be a waiting line there can be some solution which you can suggest so that way this service design failure points and risk analysis and can be improved and you have service cape you can see various uh, 
environmental dimensions and you have holistic environment and then you have uh, moderators, internal response and you have behavior. These are the models of service scape. So you have ambient conditions, space functions, signs, symbol and artifacts. These has to be processed through perceived service scape and you have employee response and you have customer response. How the employee is responding to the customer's expectation, how the customer is responding to the company's offering. In that way you can improve upon the com cognitive, emotional, psychological elements. Employee response can be processed, customer response can be processed and then cognitive, emotional, psychological aspects of customer has to be understood. Then you go in for the approaches where you have behavioral response of the customer, affiliation, exploration, stay longer, satisfaction, avoid some of these opposite uh, approaches. And so likewise uh, from the perspective of the customer also, attraction, stay and try to explore more, spend more dollars, get satisfied. In that way, all the uh, customer aspects and employee response can be put together. So you create a great ambience in the store and uh, you can see the underground or a sea, uh, underground restaurant, sea restaurant. Uh, it, it could be a beautiful uh, uh, component concept of service scape. So you will study it for all the various services. Then it comes to fifth unit on service industry category one. You have financial service, banking service, tourism service and public utility service, educational service. All these are studied in this fifth unit. So it's mostly few of the service sector identified and uh, given importance in the fifth unit. Likewise, you have it uh, in the service industry category two, which is healthcare service and hospitality service. So it is, uh, you know, you will be studying more in detail about various aspects of service blueprinting, service designing, bridging the service gap, all that is being applied in the uh, unit six, wherein you will study healthcare and hospitality service. And you have self-learning lessons listed out here, starting from product management fundamentals, product mix, new product development, product life cycle, brand positioning, brand equity, trademark and logo, packaging evolution, packaging features, strategies, labeling, product obsolescence, and you have uh, classification of service, service marketing mix, quality dimensions, and you have banking service, marketing strategies for banking service, and you have banking service, educational service and public utility service comparison, tourism service and tourism marketing, how it is being done, travel, uh, how it is being done, and you have healthcare, how it is being done, hospital services, how it is done, and you have hotel industry, how it is done, all, all that you will be studying from the perspective of <coughs> product and service marketing or product management or service management. And also you have a classical educational tutorial which is on Z Room, Creating Quality Rental Living. It's a case study based in China, how the rental uh, rooms can be marketed when it, there is a possibility of uh, you know, getting, promoting the purchase of a whole house. People may be uh, finding it difficult to purchase a unit in the apartment and therefore try to promote the rental service. How best you can promote the rental service? How you can price it? Who will be the target segment? And how this service marketing can be done? How you design the service offerings? What are the things that you will give importance when it is coming to the marketing of the services? And that can be studied in the case study. It is available in the Harvard uh, uh, Business School uh, Education Publishing. And you can see TU0088 in the form of a PDF it is available. We will be discussing in our next uh, online tutorial. So with this, uh, we are coming to the end of uh, product and service marketing lessons. And all of you, welcome to subscribe to our EMMC AU, Educational Multimedia Center, Anamalai University. Search for it and subscribe it. And uh, you can also give your feedback to prof underscore cells in Telegram. And uh, you can also join and uh, enjoy the channel in Telegram, M Forum at the rate of AUDDE100. So 